My next guests are here to help us find some solace and direction in this tragedy. Please welcome my Holy Rollers panel, host of ABC Family Sunday Mass and the author of God Underneath, Father Edward Beck, professor of religious studies at the University of Pennsylvania and blogger for Religion Dispatch Dispatches Magazine and and spiritual director of Romemu, a Judaism center in New York, Rabbi David Ingber. Okay, now let's look at a clip. Us, do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Well, he kind of is leading us to religion, I think, which uh, very many... I mean, in these horrible times, most people will turn to religion. And since you're all religious people, I would assume that you agree with that. Yes? Yeah, I just think he used the wrong scripture quotes. <laughs> oh. I mean, I think he should have been talking about the Isaiah quote, Which beat is? their swords into plowshares, their spears into mm. pruning hooks, love of neighbor, love of enemy. I mean, we have to change the culture of violence and the culture of <clears throat> revenge. That's mm -hmm. what produces this kind of behavior. Yeah. We believe that if you do something wrong to me, I have a right to get back at you. An eye for an eye. Yeah, but that's not that's a Christian thing in, virtue. That's also in the Bible, though. Yeah. An eye for an eye and a tooth. It's not a Christian the virtue. The Hammurabi Cove. I'm Jesus code, I taught that. love of enemies. Yeah. Jesus yeah. taught turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. Until we get beneath this culture so, of violence. So do you well, feel that this perpetrator should not even get a funeral then? Or should get a We should treat him kindly? What I'm death? saying is as long as you're saying and we have a culture that says vengeance is good, you're going to have guys like this guy who's mentally ill seeing, oh, the hero who shoots up the bad guy, he gets rewarded. That's a good thing to do. You go to a movie, you're cheering for James Bond, you're yeah. cheering for Charles Bronson yeah. in Death mm -hmm. Wish, I Vigilantism. Know. Make my day. Well, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. there's, there's a, a larger, larger problem afoot here. There's a much bigger issue that needs to be tackled. But to your question of whether or not religion has a, a, a source here, yeah. of course religion should provide solace. But the real question is, uh, are we suppressing or giving solace? And sometimes religious perspectives, especially religious views that are purported or given out there, actually serve to suppress very natural, organic feelings that arise in, in a situation like, like this. For example, people might feel rage at God. People might feel rage in general. And so it's really important that when you're listening and you're offering <coughs> scriptural verses or religious uh, answers to these questions, that we also leave room number one for mystery. We don't know. And sometimes giving religious answers, it's all about certainty, but really we have no clue, and it's a great mystery, number one. But, number two, yeah. just the last thing, is that, yeah. that there's a righteous indignation that sometimes, sometimes religious answers will kind of paste over instead of getting people galvanized to actually act in the world, we say everything is okay in some way. So it's really a balance between offering solace and but also But what if you're not people. religious? What if you well, don't believe? I think if then, you're, yeah. What are you supposed to turn to in, yeah. this, in this horrible time? Well, I, you know, I wrote in my blog about this, and I said, you know, I felt like I had more in common with some of the atheists during this time period and the reason why I said that was because at least they would think about this is a humanistic kind of thing you know humans shouldn't kill each other if we want to value life That's what he's we don't have too. to value life just based on a belief in the supreme being mm -hmm. or not so I think that's just important I don't know what you do if you're an atheist or an agnostic, but I do think the one thing we can appeal to is we're all human <coughs> beings. We need to stop the violence. We need to think about this and whether you want to put that in, you know, a biblical code or another, the Quran or Talmud, wherever you put that. Mm -hmm. you've got, we need to start thinking about how can we change yeah. a cycle right. of violence. But yeah. you know, what I was really thinking of was, you know, whenever any family member has passed away in my mm -hmm. family, and some of them were very untimely, um, the priest at my parish would give solace to the family mm -hmm. that they're in heaven mm -hmm. and they're in a better place and all that stuff. Uh, isn't that what these people have to do now? I mean, how, what else can they turn to? I think those are yeah. bad things to say. Why? Yeah. I think those are bad things to say. Well, that's what they're saying. Yeah. Well, Especially when it has, it has to do to with children. How do, you, how do you explain to a child your friend died hard. or your brother died? Sometimes silence is the best answer Absolutely. and you're just with people in their pain. You don't have the answers. Don't so try you, to explain away God as so, if so God you, wanted this little angel to come to heaven. I don't believe any of that. That's so you don't think you should yeah. say to these children, when children, when children die, when grandma dies, they say she's in heaven. You don't agree with I, that? Yes. No, I believe you can say, look, this is not the mm -hmm. end of life. We believe in eternal life, and there will be some kind of reunification. Oh. But don't say, well, 
They're well, you don't know. Place. You don't know that that's true yeah. either. Though. Well, that's what my faith teaches me. Your faith believes that's that, but you're faith. saying don't tell them stuff like right. that. But that you, Julie, but there, you there, don't are know that's you tell, true. there are things that you tell children, and things you tell adults. I mean, yeah. to, to conflate the two is really uh, is really absurd. And actually, that's one of the problems: adult religion versus childish religion. Mm -hmm. So, speaking to a, to children and telling them something is one thing. Speaking to adults and telling them, oh, that there is this solace. Okay. Really, what 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 Edward was saying is really profound. That. Sometimes, often, silence, and a silence that is full, not an empty silence, but a silence that's full of presence, is actually much more important in working with grief yeah. than giving facile and silly answers that might actually make you things worse. you agree with that, Anthony? Well, I think sometimes, you know, especially for children in yeah. this particular case, you have to make them understand that this was, this was not planned. This is not something that God did, okay? Because right. I think that's really important to say. When you say there's evil in the world, and yeah. this is an evil act. This is, you know, you don't have to say that person was evil. This is an evil act. But doesn't this kind of thing turn you against God in some way? It could. Was he, I'm, I'm sure it's going to turn people. Why not watch over the yeah. flock? Why would this happen? But we've been asking this since the days of Job, That's innocent right. yeah. suffering, right. the Holocaust. Where was right. God? Yeah. Right. And the answer is? And you can say God is with us in the suffering. Yeah. yeah. God doesn't prevent it. God doesn't take it away. But what's the message of the cross? Jesus a righteous person was crucified unjustly. He right. suffered. I remember it's about 40 years, 30 years ago, maybe, there was a headline in Time magazine, God is dead. Then a week later mm -hmm. it said, God is not dead. He just doesn't want to get involved. Right. Is that? <laughs> well, does get involved means take it away or prevent it from happening? Then, yeah, I don't think God, God does doesn't get involved. God doesn't want to get but involved. But God is with us in the grief, I believe. You know that yeah. wonderful line mm -hmm. in Night, the L.A. Bizel? The Holocaust, where is God? And mm -hmm. he points and says, right there on the gallows. That's where God mm -hmm. is, in the midst of the suffering. I think mm -hmm. you should get more involved. I know you do. I want God to be, if I'm going to believe well, in God, want God, I want God to well, be involved. Well, God has to grow up, too. I don't want well, an uninvolved God. Has, God. To, well, God has to grow up, I had up enough too. That with that with my last husband. Okay. More with my whole <laughs> wellness panel in just a minute. And still to come, so are gun advocates ready to listen to reason? We'll find out shortly when we debate the merits of stricter gun control. What do you mean getting